Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1050, College Algebra for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In this lecture, number 34, I want to talk about, well, you know, without a better way of saying it, story problems, right? You know, this sometimes scares people all the time. Oh, no, scary story problems are so hard. Which, of course, if we never do story problems, then you sometimes beg the question, why do we bother learning math if we never use it for real life problems? Uh, so, you know, it's sort of like this give and take when it comes to story problems. Uh, yes, they can be challenging, but they really are necessary and motivate a lot of what we do in this series here. So for this lecture, I want to go through four different story problems involving rational functions of some kind. Now be aware that a lot of these examples actually will be polynomial functions because every polynomial function actually is a rational function. It's just a special subset. Uh, and oftentimes it happens that as we set up some things, they do lead to these polynomial expressions, some rational uh, expressions as well. The one we see at hand will it'll turn into a polynomial equation we have to solve. We'll see some uh, proper rational expression showing up in a future story problem in this lecture, uh, lecture 34 here. So let me just read the problem for us and see how we can approach this. So imagine a new bakery offers decorated sheets of cakes for children's birthday parties and other special occasions, maybe weddings or, you know, whatever people, people like to get together and eat cake. Uh, the bakery wants the volume of a small cake to be 351 cubic inches. That's going to be sort of a relevant thing. Um, so if anything, as I'm reading through this, because sometimes when you read a story problem, you have to read through it more than once. Sometimes just read it once, just kind of get all of the uh, information at once, and then you go again through it the second time to kind of look for this pertinent information. Um, I have someone of the disadvantage, or I should say the advantage, maybe disadvantage for the viewer here, that I've already worked through this problem prior to the video, so I kind of know what the important information is. And so that might be a little bit misleading if you're trying to do a story problem on your own. Again, if I have a story problem I've never seen before, I'd probably read through it once, get all the information, and then go through it again and pick out what information actually is relevant. So our baker wants the volume of a small cake to be 351 cubic inches. Okay, that's a statement about volume right there. Uh, the next sentence, the cake is in the shape of a rectangular solid. Okay, that's gonna be, that seems useful because that connects somehow volume with shape there. Uh, maybe I can employ some type of volume formula I know from geometry. Uh, but is the volume even relevant? What's, what's the question at hand? Um, they want the length of the cake to be four inches longer than the width of the cake and the height of the cake should be one third of the width. So there, you know, there's some specific dimensions that kind of make the cake more, you know, maybe it's easier to bake or maybe there's some aesthetic uh, artistic appeal to it. You know, this cake looks great. I don't know. Uh, but essentially the question comes down to what should the dimensions of the cake pan B, right? So how should we make, uh, how, how should we shape the cake? All right, let's go back to some of this information we discovered here. The cake itself is supposed to be a rectangular solid, uh, some type of rectangular prism. So if I were to just draw it, we anticipate something like the following, just a rectangular prism of some kind. And so we want to know the dimensions of the cake. All right, so we're going to have, we're going to, have to have some type of length and width and height which honestly, I never know which one is which, which one's length, which one's width. I just know that width is the other one from length, whatever. Height usually means go up and down. So we have some rectangular prism. We're trying to find the dimensions of it. We have to find this L, W, and H. So we knew some information on volume, right? We knew the volume. Well, the volume of a rectangular prism is going to be length times width times height, but it should also equal 351 cubic inches. Now, when it comes to story problems, I think it's very important to keep track of the units in play. We're measuring volume with a cubic inch. Each of our dimensions, length, width, and height should also be measured in inches in some kind. And so at the moment, we don't have enough information to determine what the individual length should be, uh, but we know the total volume should be 351. Okay, we're gonna find out that that 351 was a generous choice uh, by the by the question writer right here, but we'll, we'll see how to approach that in just a second. So what can we find out about these? We need some more information here. So we want that the length, okay, so the length, that's my L value, right? The length of the cake should be four inches longer than the width. Okay, so if we, if we try to digest that a little bit, um, so they want the length of the cake to be. So when you see things like this, to be, like forms of the word is, when I say the length is four inches longer than the width, that typically means an equal sign of some kind. So L is, L is what? 
Um, L is four inches longer. That suggests to me I'm going to take four plus something. Four inches longer. I go four inch, four plus the width. Okay, the width is W. So I put that together and I get the expression that the length is supposed to be W plus four. Okay, so I want the length to be a little bit longer than the width, which if I want to satisfy my, my picture right here, maybe I switch locations here and call this the width and call this the length. You, you clearly don't need to draw your picture to scale or anything like that, but you can do that. Uh, let's see, what else do we need to know? So then continuing that sentence, and the height of the cake is to be, well, again, that's an is type word there. So H is equal to, equal to what? One third of the width, one third of the width right there. And so when you put that together, the height is equal to one third of the width. What I notice here is that I can express the length with respect to the width, and I can express the height with respect to the width. So if I revisit my volume formula, volume, is equal to the length, well, that's W plus four, the, the width, well, that's just W, and then the height is one third W, this is supposed to equal 351. So then if I focus on this part of the problem right here, right here, then it's like, hey, this is a polynomial equation. If I solve this polynomial equation for W, then I can use that to determine what is the what should be the dimensions of my cake. So I've now set up my my uh, equation right here. I want to solve it. Now, honestly, in practice, um, I would use some type of computer software calculator to solve these polynomial equations for us. Because oftentimes, I mean, to solve this equation, we have to find essentially the x-intercepts of a of the polynomial function, which that often turns out to be something irrational. Uh, and so, like I said, a calculator can be very helpful here. But to practice skills we've learned previous in this class, let's use the algebra that we've learned. And I've, I've necessarily given us numbers uh, that we can solve without any, without any numerical analysis whatsoever here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply out the left-hand side. Because when we have a polynomial function, we want it to look like p of x equals 0. right? That's our goal so we can start factoring the left-hand side. We have to get there. Um, I first wanted to, uh, let's see, let's times the, the w's here together. This is going to give us x, well, I'm going to stick the one third out in front. We're going to get x plus 4 times w squared equals 351. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the w squared here. So we get one third times, uh, where did that x come from? That should be a w. A w cubed plus 4w. Uh, squared is equal to 351. Now, personally, I mean, fractions are great numbers and all, but if you had a choice between a fraction and not a fraction, I think we all agree that we don't want a fraction here. Now, we can clear the denominator. So if I multiply the left-hand side by three, that'll cancel out the one-third, but what's good for the goose is good for the gander. I have to do it on both sides of the equation equally uh, so that equality is preserved. So we get uh, now w cubed plus 4w squared. And so then we have to do 351 times 3, uh, which that will give you 1,053, uh, like so. And so then if I move, uh, then if I move the negative, well, I should subtract 1,053 from both sides. And we end up with the equation w cubed plus 4w squared minus 1,053 equals 0, like so. Great. And so now I have this polynomial equation. I'm going to highlight this. We have to solve this polynomial equation. Now, find the, notice we have a polynomial equal to 0. This basically means we're looking for the roots of this polynomial. We need to find the roots of this thing, uh, which is something we did in the past. So one of the first things I would, I'd ask myself is, you know, certainly there's going to be some domain concerns, like what ex answers are actually considered acceptable. Um, I can't have a negative width of a cake. So I really don't care about negative answers here, and I can't have an imaginary length of a cake. The answers have to be real. Um, you could have a square root. You know, you could have a square root of two length of, uh, like, inches or something. That is possible. So, so irrational numbers are acceptable, but I need to have something positive. And so when you look at this, this right here, we're going to take the factors of 1,053, and that's, we're going to use, like, a rational roots test to kind of to kind of work through that. So we look at these possible P's and Q's. Well, you always get one as a possibility. I know three is a factor, right? Um, if you try to start factoring the 351 a little bit more, um, we, we could do that. And feel free to use a calculator, you know, to help you out here. Um, which case, 351, uh, let's see, that factors. Well, you know, honestly, it's like, we again, you could actually write all the factors if we wanted to. And so just so you're just clear, from the rational roots test, you would end up with like 9, 13, uh, 27, 
39, 81, 117, 351, and then 1,053. Uh, so, so the idea there is like 350, 351, it's 13 times 9, I believe. Uh, that seems That seems possible. Anywho, you get all whatever those turn out to be. One thing I want to point want to point out to you is that we knew three was a divisor immediately because remember we took three fifty one and times it by three. That's where we got one thousand fifty three. So instead of searching every divisor of a thousand fifty three, we might just start with the divisor that's kind of obvious. What if we tried three in this situation? Okay, so then that's when we're going to start running synthetic division. So using our coefficients, we have one. Four. There's no linear term, so we need to put a zero there, and then a, ne a negative 1,053 in that situation. So if we tried running it with three, bring down the one, one times three is three, plus four is seven, times three is going to be uh, 21 there, plus zero is 21. Times that by three, you get 63, and notice that's not going to equal zero. So this kind of shows us here that really... Um, our number, the number three was going to be, it's just too small, right? Uh, that, I mean, this specific number here, I mean, if we need to, we got, what, negative 990. Uh, that seems that seems about right there. Uh, so the, the point is you, you got something way, way too small because that negative is so big there. So three isn't going to work, but we basically need to try something bigger uh, in order for these, these coefficients to balance out with negative 1,000. 53. And that's when we start investigating then divisors of 351. And so that's when I'm like, okay, uh, okay, so I need something bigger than three. How do I factor 351? Well, 351, if you start che checking it, notice the digits, three plus five plus one adds up to be nine. That means it's divisible by both three and nine. Um, if you divide 353 by three, you end up with 117, which was also on our list. Um, if you then divide, if you try to factor 117, uh, notice one plus one plus seven is also nine. Uh, that's still divisible by three. You can take out another three, you get 39 and 39 factors as 13 and three. So there's actually a lot of factors of three in there. Um, so I think I misspoke when I said earlier, did I say nine times 13? It should be 27 times 13. Um, uh, whatever the, the, the point is this, this number the 1053, not that one. This one right here, it does factor as three to the fourth times 13. So we could start to try to find other ones. We could try bigger factors if you want to. If you try like 27, right? If you have this list, 27, how does 27 uh, work with this? I'm gonna erase these numbers right here. Um, so in that situation, if we tried 27, we end up with, we'll bring down the one, one times 27 is 27 plus four is equal to 31 times 27. That's gonna be 837. Add that to zero, you get 837. You times that by 27, you end up with 22,599. That's gonna be way too big now, right? Uh, you end up with still like 21 and a half thousand. So we tried three, it was too small. We tried 27, it's way too big. Notice everything in the bottom is a positive number. That says that everything bigger than 27 is gonna be way too big. They're just gonna, that'll just exacerbate the problem. So now we're down to something like nine or, or 13, right? Uh, so if we tried 13, uh, we'd see that one also turns out to be too big. Uh, if we try nine, that's actually gonna be the magic one right here. If you try nine, Bring down the one, one times nine is nine, plus four is 13, times nine is 117, plus zero is 117, times nine is 1053, which that then gives us the root we were looking for. And so that gives us a factorization that's helpful. We get that our polynomial factors as at, uh, w, w minus nine times, then looking at the quadratic in play right here, we're going to get w squared plus 13w plus 117, for which then if we can try to factor that, we would do so. Now, it is a quadratic. I mean, factors of 117, uh, we saw those a little bit above, right? So 3 and 39. It has to add, has to, add up to be 13. That seems a little bit challenging. Uh, I'm trying to add things together. I'm, my temptation to think is there's not going to be a magic pair of factors of 113 that have to be 13. 
well, sorry, factors of 117 that have to be 113. I don't know if we can do it. So we, we might run to the quadratic formula, look at the discriminant, for example. So we're supposed to take b squared minus 4ac, right? And so in that situation, you would get 13 squared, which is 169, minus uh, 4 times 117. That turns out to be 468. And you can see it's like that's going to be a negative number. So the quadratic formula tells you there's no real roots uh, to, this, to this number. So the only thing we get here is the width has to be 9 inches. So if we come up here and summarize what we found, then we see the following. The width should be 9 inches. That's what solving the equation told us. Um, if we plug that into the other equations, then the length, the length should be 9 plus 9 plus uh, 4, which would be 13 inches. And then the height should be one third of that, should be 3 inches. And then you can check that out, check that out there. If we take 9 times 3 times 13, that does give us the 351 that we had before. So those should be the dimensions of the cake. Now, again, this question... Uh, we ended up finding a root using these techniques we learned from the previous unit, uh, number four there. But like I said, in practice, if one was trying to solve this quadratic equation, it's very likely that, well, the answer might not be a pretty little integer like it was. Uh, this is sort of like the Mickey Mouse version of this problem, I confess. Oftentimes, you get some, you know, irrational number as the solution. And so we have to get an approximation without delving into how one solves these problems numerically that takes us beyond the scope of college algebra uh just want you to be aware that the real the real kicker for this one the real thing i care about the most is understand the viewer understanding where this equation came from the technique of solving it by all means people could critique me in the in the comments all day long i'm perfectly happy with that but the point of story problems is not necessarily about how you solve it but how you set it up um, if a student can understand how to set up a story problem, then they're probably good at solving it. And so I don't have much of a worry. That's the real thing about story problems. How do you set these things up?